Hey there, we are here at the Neutron Light Cycle Run, which is officially open at Disney's Magic Kingdom. Today, we're gonna go over everything you need to know before you go to make sure that you get to ride on your next visit. Hi, I'm Serena from Living by Disney, and I'm here with Drew, and we have been very busy testing the process for getting a spot to ride on Tron, and we've got all the details for you guys to make sure you get to ride on your next visit. Let's start with the basics. Tron is located in Magic Kingdom's Tomorrowland, just next to Space Mountain. The huge canopy of the ride really adds a great look to the landscape, and wait till you see it at night. It's a launched steel motorbike coaster that reaches a top speed of 59 miles per hour, making it one of the fastest rides at Disney World. Now, I know when you're researching rides that have recently opened, it's tricky because you want to be prepared, but you don't want the whole ride experience spoiled for you. No worries here. We're gonna tell you what you need to know, but we'll be careful not to show any on-ride footage. We're just gonna focus on showing you things that are related to the information we're sharing. In the video description, there are chapters so that you can choose the sections that you're most interested in hearing. Now there are two entry points to the attraction. One is from Tomorrowland next to Space Mountain, and then there's another in the back of Storybook Circus near Goofy's Barnstormer. And the height requirement for Space Mountain is 48 inches. Now what makes Tron different from other coasters at Walt Disney World is the ride vehicles. Walt Disney Imagineering created these motorbike style vehicles focusing on the individual rider experience. You're gonna sit in a motorbike style seat and lean forward over the bike. Then you're locked into place via a back restraint and a calf restraint. The ride position really adds a level of immersion to the whole ride experience. I loved the way the bikes lean into the turns like a motorcycle. It really enhances the sense of speed too. Since it is a different type of ride vehicle than you're probably used to, you might wanna check and see if you're comfortable before you ride. So just before you enter the main queue, there are test seats available for you. You can try them out, see how it feels, and you can also practice kind of getting on and off of the ride vehicle and make sure that you're completely comfortable before you commit yourself to riding on any specific seat. The way you get on is you have to step over the bike to board it, so make sure that you're wearing something that will stretch, because that will definitely help. Now, if you can't fit in the light cycles or it's just not the way that you want to ride, you're not 100% comfortable riding in that position, no worries. There is an alternative ride vehicle that is available on some of the coaster trains. It's just like a normal bench seat style roller coaster with an upright seat and a lap bar. However, there are only a few of the coaster trains that have this accessible ride vehicle, so you might have a little more of a wait for those particular ride vehicles. This is also the car that you will ride in if you are transferring from a wheelchair. Okay, let's talk about the on-ride experience. First of all, let me just say that Tron is an absolute blast to ride. It's fast, but it is super smooth. There's no jarring to your body at all. It is very comfortable to ride. No real dizziness or motion sickness issues are being mentioned either. The main thing it has is that it is fast. It's got a very quick takeoff and there's speed through the entire length of the ride. I would say if you're okay with that last bit of test track where the car is moving super fast, then you can probably handle this one too. Another thing that's new with the Tron Light Cycle Run, at least at Disney World, is for the first time they have a locker system. They do require you to put all of your bags and your hats and ears, et cetera, in there before you ride. It's free, it's built right into the queue, so it's really easy to use, and it fits really large backpacks just fine. You can keep your phones or wallets with you. There's a little place to put them right when you sit on the light cycle in front of you. It's just like a tiny little compartment though, so it's not gonna fit much more than a phone or a wallet. And what I do love about the locker system, at least for me, is that if you forget your locker number, you can just scan your park ticket or your magic band, and it'll remind you of the number because that happens to me all the time. You might be thinking to yourself, why do I need to watch an entire video just to get on a ride at Disney World? Like, it's open, I'll just jump in line. This is pretty easy stuff. Well, not so much. Tron is the newest ride here, so it's going to be crazy popular. And you're going to need to be prepared and know how to ride it if you want to be able to experience it on your next trip because there is no standby line option. That's right. You cannot just walk up to the ride and get in line. Lately, when Disney opens rides, they use a virtual queue system instead so that you don't have to spend hours waiting in line. 
The system works, but it won't accommodate everyone who wants to ride each day. But don't worry, after watching this guide, you're gonna be able to know what you need to secure your spot. Now there are two different ways to ride Tron. The first option is the virtual queue. It lets you reserve a spot for the ride ahead of time on your Disney app, so you don't have to spend your day standing in line. It assigns you a spot in this virtual line, and then it will notify you when it's your turn. Overall, it's a great system. It saves you what would surely be lots of hours waiting in line for the newest and most popular rides at the park. The only thing is there is always more demand for these rides than capacity. That means that not everyone who tries to get a spot in this virtual queue is gonna be able to. So it's great when you get a spot, but not so great when you don't. More on how to increase your chances of getting in the virtual queue in just a bit. The second way to ride is by purchasing the individual Lightning Lane for Tron. These are the a la carte options that Disney has in each park. They are separate from the Genie Plus bundle and you pay for just one ride per person. The prices for these vary each day by the crowd levels and the popularity of the ride. So far, Tron has been averaging around $20 a person for this individual Lightning Lane option. So that sounds pretty simple. You get in the free virtual queue or you pay for the Lightning Lane. But there are some details with both of those that you're gonna wanna know to increase your chances of getting to use them. First, if you decide to buy an individual Lightning Lane for Tron, or for any of the other attractions it's offered for, which would be Seven Dwarfs Mine Train at Magic Kingdom, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind at Epcot, Rise of the Resistance at Hollywood Studios, or Flight of Passage at Animal Kingdom. If any of those are something that you're going to buy, the time when you can first purchase them depends on where you stay. If you're staying at a Disney resort or any of their partner resorts, you can buy those individual lightning lanes at 7 a.m. the day you visit. But if you stay anywhere else, including home for us locals, you can't buy it until the park opens. So buying time for individual lightning lanes is 7 a.m. for resort guests and park opening time for non-resort guests, which doesn't seem like a big deal, except that for popular rides or on a very busy day, those lightning lanes will sell out. That means that by the time you get a chance to buy it, if you are staying off site, they may already be gone for the day. So if you're a Disney Resort guest, you definitely do have an advantage there. Again, this isn't always an issue, but when a ride is super new, like Tron is, then its demand is gonna be the highest, and that means for a while, it will probably sell out before the offsite guests can get to it. So that's the paid option. Let's go into the details of the free virtual queue option. As I said, it's totally free. It's done in your My Disney Experience app. In order to use this option, you're gonna need a few things. You're gonna need a Disney account, you're gonna need a park ticket attached to that account, and you're going to need a park reservation for Magic Kingdom if you wanna ride Tron. You'll have two chances each day to get a spot in this virtual queue. It opens up twice. The first is at 7 a.m. and the second one is at 1 p.m. For the 7 a.m., your location doesn't matter. For the 1 p.m. one, you do have to be already scanned in and have entered the park in order to join that one. Since you don't have to be inside the park for the 7 a.m. one, more people tend to try that one so that usually fills up faster because you have to be inside the park already for the one o'clock one, then it's a little easier to get at that time. Now note that the second virtual queue time being at one means that it's still gonna be before those park hopping hours start. At Disney World, you can't park hop until after 2 p.m. So that means anytime you wanna get a virtual queue, you're pretty much gonna to have to have a park reservation for that park and have it be the park you start with that morning. The height requirement for Tron is 48 inches, so make sure your kids are tall enough before you get them a spot on the virtual queue or purchase a lightning lane for them. Now, because it's so new, the virtual queue has been filling up really fast every day, like within seconds. So you're gonna to wanna to give yourself the best chance of success here. Here's a few tips to increase your chances of getting a spot in that virtual queue. First, make sure you have the latest version of the My Disney Experience app on your phone and that your park tickets are already linked to your account. Then be ready to join the virtual queue as soon as it becomes available. You're gonna wanna sign on and get yourself ready a little bit before it goes live so that you are ready to pull the trigger and go. Make sure that your connection is as good as it can be I have found that my cell service is usually better than the Disney Wi-Fi, but check that out and just see if you can get the strongest connection possible so that you can get into this virtual queue. 
you're able to confirm your party beforehand. So you can do that to save yourself time. It'll show up as an option to say confirm your party and people will be pre-checked. Anybody who has a park reservation and a park ticket that's also linked to your account will automatically be checked and you can confirm that you want those people in your group when you get a spot in the virtual queue. Then head to the virtual queue screen on your app and wait. This page works with a pull down to refresh screen. So you're gonna to wanna to utilize that. If you really wanna get into the nitty gritty and give yourself the best chance of getting one, then if you have somebody else with you, have them watching the exact time on time.gov. I know this sounds really extra, but it really does work. The moment it turns to 7 a.m., pull down to refresh on exactly 7 a.m. on the dot, and chances are it will pop up for you. And lastly, if you have more people in your group, multiple people can try to get into the virtual queue at the same time. As soon as someone gets in, it'll stop working for the others. So it doesn't hurt you if more people wanna try, it just gives you more chances for success. The only other variable to the virtual queue system is during the extended evening hours for deluxe resort guests. So if you happen to be a deluxe resort guest and you get to come back to Magic Kingdom during a few hours, one night a week, I think currently it's always on Wednesday nights, then for those that can take advantage of those bonus hours, they do open a third virtual queue at 6 p.m. just on those days and just for deluxe resort guests who can use it. So just to summarize the two different ways you can ride Tron. There's a virtual queue, it's free. It can be joined at 7 a.m. from anywhere or 1 p.m. after you've entered the park. Or you can choose to purchase the individual Lightning Lane, which you can buy at 7 a.m. if you're a resort guest or at Park Open for everyone else. And they will sell out for the day fairly quickly, so if you decide you wanna use that option, make sure you get it early. Now Tron looks really cool during the day, but it looks even better at night. I think that the lights on the canopy are just so cool to look at and they do really look neat when you're on the ride. However, keep in mind that if you use the free virtual queue, you don't get to choose your ride time. It's gonna put you in a queue and just tell you when you need to come back. So if you really wanna ride at night, the only way you're gonna be able to guarantee that is if you do the individual lightning lane that you buy, and then that one allows you to actually choose the time that you want to ride. If you opt for the free virtual queue, they're gonna tell you when to come back and you have to return within an hour of your callback time. So you can't put it off and hope that you can wait and come back later after it's already dark. And so far they've been sticklers about this rule, so I would definitely make sure that you're back within your hour window. Oh, and the photo pass on the ride is awesome. For the first time, they give you not only just a photo, but a cool slow-mo video. And it all comes as part of your on-ride photo pass. And the video and the photo is from both sides. I love that. So whichever side of the ride you're sitting on, you're gonna get a great shot of you. The on-ride photo pass pictures and video will automatically download to your Disney app. So just make sure to check that out after you ride. And if for some reason they don't come through, you can always contact Disney or go to guest relations and they can find it and hook it up to your account for you. As far as where to sit on this ride, there's really no bad seat, but personally, I actually prefer the back row. I don't know what it is, but it just feels faster when you're in the back. And I also like that you get more time to see the things happening around you. When you're in the front, it just it happens too quickly for you to kind of pay attention to. I also really liked being able to see the other light cycles ahead of me and the lights on our whole car as we go. I just thought that was really cool. Some people really prefer the front. I do think the photo pass looks really cool when you're in the front and there's like nobody in front of you. But as far as like the on-ride experience, I actually preferred the back. Tron is a fairly short ride. I think it's just under two minutes long. So it does go by really quickly, but I think because it's so fast the entire time, you do feel like you've got a really good ride, even though it is short. But if for some reason you don't like it or you feel like it's way too fast for you, the one good thing is it's over really quickly. <laughs> so you don't have long to be stressed out. Tron is a fantastic addition to Magic Kingdom. I'm so excited it's finally open and we get to ride it. You definitely are gonna to wanna to make sure to ride on your next trip to Magic Kingdom. Hopefully these tips will help you. If there's something we didn't cover or you have any extra questions about trying to experience Tron, leave them in the comments and we will definitely reply. This is such a fun ride, you guys are gonna love it. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you've subscribed if you haven't and we'll see you next time.